Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. So I can't believe this, but in my last video on VAV boxes, I forgot to draw in the flow sensor. What makes this really bad is that for eight years at the beginning of my career, I was VAV box product manager, and I even launched a new flow sensor during that time. So I'm probably gonna get some flack for this. But flow sensors are a pretty big topic and I wanted to cover them in their own videos, so let's do that now. So let's start by rewinding that last video a little bit so I can add in the flow sensor to the components of the VAV box. The flow sensor lives in the inlet of the VAV box. It's connected to the controller. When I said that the controller sends a signal to the actuator to open to give more air, the signal from the flow sensor is what the controller is using to determine how much airflow is moving through the VAV box. The thermostat has its set point, say 75 degrees, and it senses the space temperature, say 78 degrees, and it sends that to the controller, which tells the actuator open. During this whole time, the flow sensor is sending a signal to the controller, letting it know what the actual airflow is based on the pressures. So let's look at how the airflow sensor does this. So let's move this guy out of the way. A few videos back in the Airside Pressure Basics video, I explained how a pitot tube measures total pressure and static pressure and how you can use that to calculate airflow. I'll put a link to that video in the details below, but here's a screenshot of all that math and you can pause the video if you want to review it. I'll talk about the different types of flow sensors in a minute, but flow sensors are basically pitot tubes. The pitot tube measures total pressure and static pressure and from the total pressure equation, you can calculate velocity pressure, and using that, you can calculate velocity, and from there, CFM. Let me make a little room and draw a controller here. There are two tubes that come out of the flow sensor, one from the total pressure port and one from the static pressure port. They are connected to ports on the controller. The controller turns this pressure signal into an electric signal using a PE switch, which stands for pressure to electric switch. And it uses that signal to basically do this math and calculate the airflow. So we need to know the airflow because in a VAV system, we are varying the airflow to meet the load. So let's say our space needed 500 CFM to maintain whatever the load is in it. If the load goes up, the CFM has to go up, and this measurement comes from the flow sensor. So let's move this off to the side and look at a whole system. Let's draw a space that has a few VAV boxes in it. So here's the thing. If the pressure in the ductwork goes up due to changes in the rest of the VAV system, maybe other boxes close or open in their zone, then the airflow through the VAV box will also go up or down. Imagine a hose connected to sprinklers. If you cap off one sprinkler, the other sprinkler heads will have a higher flow. The VAV system has to compensate for this, and it does that with the flow sensor. So if we are in this space, and this VAV box needs more air, and it opens up, but these three want less air, and they close off, the pressure will go up in the whole system, which will push even more air out of the VAV box that wanted more air, and it will need to know to back down and close the damper a little bit to maintain the right CFM based on the pressure it's seeing in the system. This loop is continuously happening in VAV systems. The flow sensor is sensing the changes in the whole system and adjusting the damper position to maintain the set point in the space. Now let's move this out of the way and look at types of flow sensors. I said that flow sensors are basically pitot tubes, but they're a little more complicated than a regular pitot tube. First of all, a pitot tube just measures pressure at a single point. So if you have a ductwork and you stick the pitot tube in, you're going to measure the pressure right here. And if you have nice even airflow, that's okay. But if you're at a bend in the ductwork, the airflow is going to kind of pile up on one side and this uneven airflow will give you lower or higher pressure readings depending on how the air is coming to the pitot tube. So let me put a couple inlets here and let's look at different flow sensor types. 
So you'll frequently see a flow cross sensor, and it looks like it sounds. It's an X shape, and then there'll be four or more openings on the front side to take your total pressure readings. Next, you'll see a flow ring, or maybe it's a diamond shape, but it kind of looks like this, and then again, you'll have at least four points on the front to take total pressure readings. Least common, but you'll still see it occasionally, is an anubar sensor, which is just a straight line in the ductwork with points on the front to take total pressure readings. So let's label these flow cross, flow ring, and anubar. And so all the total pressure readings are taken on the front side, and the static pressure is taken on the back side. And the way we're looking at this is if we are looking into the inlet with the air hitting us in the back of the head. The flow ring and anubar sensors are linear averaging flow sensors. And the flow cross is a center averaging flow sensor. So linear averaging means that the measurement is taken at one end of the sensor. So if you imagine the ports come out here and are measuring total pressure and static pressure in these two, and in the flow cross, it's coming out of the center. So when you look at how airflow goes into the ductwork, if you end up with a situation with bad inlet conditions and all the airflow piles up on this side, you can see that these two ports would have a higher reading and would probably have higher weight in the average. Same thing with the flow ring, because you're taking the readings on one end of the sensor. Now in the flow cross, if it piles up on one side, you're taking the reading in the center, so one side may be high and one side may be low, but it is averaging at the center, and you tend to get a more accurate reading, especially in bad inlet conditions. Different VAV box manufacturers have different types of flow sensors, but you'll usually see a recommendation of one and a half to three duct diameters of straight duct before a VAV box for best flow sensor accuracy. This is usually not an issue, especially on smaller size inlets, but a 12 inch or larger inlet, this could be three feet or more, so space and location of the VAV box may be something that needs to be considered. So that's VAV box flow sensors and how they work. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.